In today's video, I go on a pilgrimage to my mother's hometown, Montovun, in Croatia. We also visit Porek, a day trip from Trieste. <music> Our last fall day in Trieste was spent on another big day trip. We drove a total of about three and a half hours and 176 kilometers. This time we drove from Trieste to Motovon, a journey of about 74 kilometers that took about an hour. Motovon has a special place in my heart because it's the town that my mother grew up in was actually part of Italy just until um, after the Second World War where it became part of Yugoslavia. But from around 1918 to uh, 1945, it was part of Italy and the area was predominantly uh, Italian um, in ethnic origin, language and culture. My mother was forced to uh, flee from the, uh, the communists after the war and she fled to Trieste, where she met my father and later they were married. I've been to Montevun a couple of times and the place is always, uh, like I said, special to my heart. So just a tip for the unwary, to get to Montevun and Porec, you do need to cross from Italy through to Slovenia into Croatia. You do need to show your passports because there is passport control uh, borders between Slovenia and Croatia. So if you're making this trip, make sure you do bring your passport. I last came to Montevon about 10 years ago and the thing that changed is that you're no longer able to drive up just below the uh, the old um, city walls. You need to uh, now park several hundred metres below the city walls for a reasonably hefty fee and walk up um, the narrow streets to the main part of the city itself. It was a particularly hot day, it was another 38, 39 degree day and um, it was a little bit of an effort getting up the hill. But once up there, you're greeted with spectacular views and a medieval old town centre. The town was perched on the hill, fortified with really thick walls to protect itself from all the different uh, bandits and enemies of the time. We had a nice ice cold beer at this cafe and took the opportunity to have a bit of a rest and just look out onto the marvelous vistas that we saw in front of us. The architecture of Montevon is a little bit unique. Not only have you got the really thick and high uh, city walls, but you've also got um, a ring of uh, big public buildings that's protecting the inner city. You've got tunnels going through the buildings and I presume in medieval times they would have been protected by very heavy doors. So you actually needed to penetrate uh, these tunnels and doors and you'd see um, the, the main sort of internal square opening up with residents living in relative 
safety. Wonderful one is also famous for truffles and for uh, different wines and spirits and brandies. We did take the opportunity to sample some gin from the store right in front of us and we actually took a bottle home. Store got it, it's very nice. After wandering around the streets of Montauban for a while, I decided to seek out and find where my mother's house was. She's no longer with us and uh, most of her relatives are no longer with us, so um, it was through, a coming difficult uh, thing to do. The only real facts I had was that my mother used to live next door to Mario Andretti, the famous uh, American and uh, Italian motor racing driver who won uh, a world uh, f1 championship i knew that there was a plaque with his name on it on the house that uh, he grew up in and my mother apparently oh, yeah, lived well. next door after a bit of searching i was able to narrow it down now i think i did identify my mother's house it was down the hill a bit and just inside the second big city walls like my mother's side of the family came from here Oh, here we go. So this is the house that Mario Andretti grew up in and my mother 
lived next door to him. So that way is a church, which means that this must have been my mother's house that she grew up in many, many years ago. So I'd say that this was my mother's house. Can't really see much. it it's uh certainly seen better days looks like no one's living in there and it's uh, abandoned bit of a yard And stunning views of the valley below. And those are the castle walls. I'll go a little bit higher. There's the castle walls. Wow. The next leg of our day trip we drove from Montevon down to Porich. It's around about uh, 30 kilometers and 40 minutes down from the mountain all the way to the coast in the Adriatic Sea. It's quite a nice drive, uh, some quite uh, hairy bits but uh, we, we got there safely in the end. There was ample parking on the outskirts of the city and it was a pretty easy walk, although it was a hot walk, to the town centre. Porek sits on a peninsula in the Adriatic Sea. It's primarily a tourist destination as well as a fishing village. It's a really delightful place to go visit. It was damn hot though, it was uh, approaching uh, 38, 39 degrees. So it did sort of hamper our uh, movements somewhat. You can see that uh, not even that many people were sunbathing or having a swim because of the heat. There's basically no shade at all. We had a nice walk around the outside of the town along the promenade and its rocky beaches before we headed inland to seek shelter from a bit of shade and had some nice lunch.
I was really struck at how clean and orderly the town centre was. There were a few people about, but I guess most sensible people would have sought shelter indoors in air conditioning rather than wandering in the streets, dying of heat. We had an ice cold beer at this restaurant and cooled down somewhat before we decided to head back to Trieste. After we finished at Porich, we made our way back to Trieste. This was a journey of around 86 kilometers, and it took us around about an hour and 15 minutes to complete. Pretty decent roads, made fairly short work of it. This was our last full day in Trieste. After we got back to the hotel, we had a bit of a siesta and cooled down a bit, went out for dinner, and then had a bit of a stroll through Piazza Unita and took some really nice uh, photos and videos of the square all lit up at night. Very, very memorable and pleasing trip to Trieste. Had six nights there. Truly spectacular. An opportunity to uh, see my cousin for the last time before unfortunately she passed away. I do hope you liked this video. If so, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll be posting more videos of the rest of our trips through Europe in 2022 in the weeks to come. In the meantime, I hope to see you back on the channel again soon. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, bye.